Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about Kodak. This is an introduction to Kodak. In a subsequent video later in the course, I'm going to go into in depth about what Kodak is and how they operate. Now, Kodak is basically a software uh, algorithm that is designed to um, compress and decompress your speech and audio signal. Now, this particular topic is not going to go through the comparisons between different Kodak at this moment, but more, of, more from a standpoint of understanding what is Kodak basically does. Now, the first thing you need to understand uh, when it comes to Kodak is that it is not just for audio we need to be concerned about. Nowadays, we need to concern about both audio and video Kodak. So what do we need to know about the two different things and how they will affect our network is very important thing to understand. First of all, important thing is how much bandwidth do we, we, do we actually have? That is one important thing for you to know, uh, be aware of your network. There is no right answer to this question because every organization will have different, different requirement and different available bandwidth. Example, how much bandwidth do you have when you're talking about LAN versus WAN? Um, so that is one thing that you have to look at. The big decision around this battle of discussion will be that huge impact on the audio and video codec you will have in the different scenarios. And for example, in a LAN, generally there is no reason to use any other codec than G.711 and G.722 because they are so super low in processing power. They do not record any delay to be able to go in and put together and then do whatever the whole uh, packet is supposed to do. However, the bad news is that when you have G711 and G722, they are bandwidth hungry codec. Though the processing power requirement is low, the bandwidth requirement is high because they are high payload. They use 64 kilobits per second plus any overhead that you may put in on top of layer two and layer three. This is generally not a concern if you are working on the LAN because in the LAN you get a lot of bandwidth. These days, 100 megabit is not is not only a de facto, but gigabit is de facto LAN connections for many devices. The G.711 or G.722 wouldn't be a problem in a case like that. But when you have a WAN environment where you're connecting to the internet, that's where the problem becomes because you may not have enough bandwidth. And even if you do have enough bandwidth, the pipe size, you may, be, you may not want to transmit large amount of data because you're going to be built for that. So that is one thing that you need to discuss with your team. We still need to have this conversation about the video as well, because the video also be going through the same path. So the codec, understanding of the codec should not only be focused on just on audio part, but you need to focus on the video as well. Now, how does a converting a voice, the process of converting voice into uh, data? Well, there is a, a process that involved. For example, in 1930, Dr. Harry Nichols that laid out the foundation of how technology will be using to convert our analog voice into digital format. And it goes through a different process. I'm not gonna bore you with the process because it's not really relevant to uh, anything these days. I mean, it's good to know. You can read this, pause this video, read this about it right here, but or you can Google it. Uh, it's basically just so shows you what are the process involved in getting an analog signal, which is our analog voice, into digital format. So the theory is that in order to get eight, uh, one second of sample of your voice, you need to take 8,000 of this sample every second. So you take 8,000, you multiply that by eight bits because you have eight bits in a per sample so you it what it yells out to be 64,000 bits now that is your g.711 uncompressed traffic there are two form of g.711 mu law which is used in north america and uh, canada and us and japan and a law which is pretty much used worldwide the two format, which is basically dictate your uh, the is standard between these two part of the world. If these two devices are communicating together using different version, like for example, someone from Europe calling someone in North America or Canada, well, in that scenario, the North America phone has to be converted to U um, A law 
in order for the communicating to take place. So the rule A law will be dictating the mu law to get converted into A law for the communication to establish. G.711, which is the toll, by, toll uh, quality codec or often known as uh, uh, uncompressed codec, is, is an ITU standard called pulse code modulation or PCM. The voice sample th uh, that PCM will process in this case will create a 64 kilobits of data. Uh, that data is carried across the network. So 64K is your voice payload, but not necessarily the final payload because you're gonna be focused on layer two and layer three header as well. G.722, which is ITU standard, wideband speech codec that operate at 58, 48, 56, and 64 kilobits per second. Typically used in LAN environment and offer a significant improvement on audio quality compared to G.711. Cisco Unified Communication Manager by default use G.711 at 64 kilobits per second whenever you enable G.711 codec within a region. By default, it's try to use G.722. G.729, which is called the internet codec, uh, used to be internet, mostly used in the internet. And this codec is mostly used for, uh, for example, high, um, you know, getting the maximum uh, bandwidth of the best quality can. is a high complexity codec, processor intensive, very advanced algorithm, takes a 64 kilobits packet, converted into eight kilobits. So you can see so much encryptions and compressions techniques being uh, in, in place. However, it does save a lot of bandwidth. Instead of sending 64 kilobits per second, you're only sending 8K. So that means you have room to send more calls. G.729 has been de facto codec for most for many years on the internet. However, that being replaced with another codec that we have called ILBC. Now, G.729 has different variation. You got NXA, which is even higher uh, complexity algorithm, but it does have something called voice activity detection. What is voice activity detection? That is basically a uh, ability to detect a silence in one party of the call. See, if I'm caught talking to you, well, if you're talking, I'm probably listening. Or if I am talking, most likely you'll be listening, or at least in civilized world, we'll be doing that. Well, when you are talking and I'm listening, my side of the network device is gonna to continue to send generate traffic, even if it is silence. Well, what the bat does, it detects silence. And if it does find silence, it's gonna suppress it. So that means you are able to you you are able to reduce bandwidth by almost thirty five percent, which is a huge. I mean, you're talking about for every call thirty five percent being redu reduction. So that can be useful. However, that doesn't work with certain application IVR, uh, faxes. That doesn't work because it needs tone to be able to understand what action is going to take place. ILBC, which is a speech codec that is suitable for robust voice communication over IP, and it is a royalty-free codec used for internet. It is designed for internet. CPU load, very much same, same as G729. ILBC process voice quality issue through graceful speech quality degradation, uh, degradation and if there, is a, if there is a loss of frame. Now, this is a codec that you can use without paying anybody anything. It is a royalty free and feel free to use it in your network. So that, those are the introduction for our codec. You got G.711 and G.729, toll quality. You have G729A and NXB, which are uh, supposed to be the business quality codec. And then finally, you have something called ILBC, which is a royalty free internet codec that can be used on uh, sending calls to the internet. So that's pretty much it for this particular chapter. I hope you under, got a, uh, an introduction to what Kodak is. We're gonna deep, um, we're going to deep in terms of more detail about Kodak, how to apply them. I'm gonna show you some demo on that, uh, how Kodak can influence your call, quality of your call, and even fast busy or whatnot. So thank you for watching and I'll see you.